All right, so today's session, we're gonna take a look at um, Google Jamboard. So Google Jamboard is Google's online whiteboard. It is integrated within the uh, G Suite ecosystem. So it does exist within the uh, Google Apps for Education market. That means that we have a little bit of control over what goes on from our end. Unlike some of the other apps, like say, for example, YouTube, which although we're connected with and we can get in with, it is not actually underneath that umbrella. So um, Jamboard is actually a piece of hardware that Google has created. So they have physical Jamboards that are actual boards that they roll around. They cost about $5,000, $6,000, I think. And then they have their free apps. So the apps are web apps and the apps are mobile apps. Um, the mobile app is a little bit more functional than the web app. So when we start to look at some of the pieces that we're gonna to do today, adding content and things like that, some of those cannot be done from the web app and they need to be done from the mobile app. It works on iOS and on Android, and we have enabled the Android app for teacher Chromebooks. So you potentially can jump into your teacher Chromebook, go into the Play Store and download the Android app for this. Now, one of the cautions that I will say is some Android apps don't run on some Chromebooks. I don't know why, I'm not entirely sure. It could be because of the uh, um, the age of the Chromebook, it could be something like that. But I know I'm fairly confident that these ones run on yours. I certainly hope that they do, um, that the uh, Jamboard one runs on your device. So I am going to... Uh, well, let's jump into to what we want to cover. I want to show you guys how to make a Jamboard, where it's going to exist in your Google Drive. Because the file is stored in your Google Drive, it can be shared out with the exact same permissions as any other file that you put in there. So that means you can share view only, you can share edit uh, access with your class or with individual students. You can post it to your classroom so that kids can get in there and you can create individual uh, Jamboards for different students based on and make a copy for each student. One of the things that you are not able to do is share specific slides with specific students. So they either get access to the whole document or none of the document. You can't say, I just want them only to see page three type thing. So. All right, cool, let's jump in. I'm gonna share with you now my screen. So that we can take a look at Jamboard. So this is the Android app. I'm gonna start out with the Android app and this is running on my Chromebook. I just brought in this picture. I know that I'm hoping that some of our elementary people who are out there are like, oh, that's the calendar that I was looking for that I had in uh, in Smart Notebook. Well, it is and it isn't, but I wanted to throw it up there so I didn't just have a blank page. I wanna show you a few pieces that go along with this. I wanna show you some of the functionality that's in here. And hopefully you can then take a look at the uh, Jamboard on, um, on your device, which is going to look a little bit more like this from the web app and you can see the different pieces you have in there. So jamboard.google.com, it's also available from the, the Waffle. It is also available in the Create window in Google Drive. So if you go to a folder and you create within that drive, you can create it inside there. Down in the bottom right-hand corner, you're gonna see the little plus icon. This is where we're gonna create our new jams from. So if we click it, it's just gonna create a new jam and we'll get to start working from there. Now, I will jump back into the uh, the web app to show you where the file is, the sharing file and whatnot. Um, but you should be able to share it from add people or turn on link sharing from the hot dog menu, the three dots hot dog menu up there, okay? A quick note of caution, by default, when I just click new jam, exactly in the same manner as when you click new document or new sheets or new slides, it goes into your root folder. So your my drive folder, it doesn't go into another folder. It doesn't automatically know where you want it to be. And if you don't name it, if you don't come up here and change the name from untitled jam, you will end up just like the 14 untitled documents you have, you will end up with a whole bunch of untitled uh, jams that then you'll have to go back and take a look at to see which one you actually want to work with. While we have the hot dog menu open here, let's take a look at a couple of the other options. 
share jam as PDF. If you want to, you do a bunch of work in here, you're creating a bunch of assignments or uh, doing some notes for your students and you wanna fire that off to them, maybe in classroom as a PDF. Here's where you do that. It'll PDF each of the different slides. And then you can share each frame as an image. So if you wanna copy a frame as an image that then maybe you wanna edit or include in a, uh, maybe a document or something like that, you can absolutely do that, so. Those of you out there who are using our interactive projectors, okay, one of the things to be aware of is just make sure that your pen is set to mouse mode, and then you can treat this in the exact same way that you treated Smart Notebook. You can click on your, over on the right-hand side, your pens, and you can write, as long as it's in, um, it, is it in, excuse me, as long as your pen is set to mouse mode, okay? If it's set to pen mode, it's not gonna work. Those of you who are still working on smart boards, okay, the trick here is either using your finger or picking up that pen and putting something down in the tray in its place so that the smart board thinks that the pen is your finger. Okay, so I just used to put down like a whiteboard marker or something in there, and then it'll think that the, uh, the pen that you're using is your finger or essentially the mouse, and then it's gonna act in exactly the same way, so you'll be able to do that. All right, so. Over on our left-hand side is where our toolbars are. This is the same whether we are in uh, the web app or the mobile app. It changes when we get down towards the bottom here, but your pens are at the top. If you click on it to select it, I'll click on the eraser and then jump back to the pen, it will select it. If you click on it a second time, it will give you some options. So you have your pen, you have a felt pen, you have a highlighter and you have a paintbrush, and then you have a bunch of different colors down here. One of the things that you won't see on the web app that is available here is some of the assistive drawing tools. So inside of here, you can do character recognition. So if you're writing, uh, you will have the recognition for character. Uh, you can do shape recognition. So if you're not perfect at drawing circles, you can do shape recognition. And then you have the auto draw magic pen. So this is where we'll, we can take a look at that later if we have some time. Essentially, you draw a really horrible drawing of a cat and it gives you a bunch of icons on the bottom that you can pick from and it makes it look much, much better. Okay, those are some of those are not available on the web tool. We have our eraser. And again, if we click on it a second time, we can, oops, we can erase all, we can clear the entire frame. We have our selection tool. We're gonna use this when we start deleting things and start moving things around. So this is actually gonna become a fairly important one. We have our laser pointer which kind of follows us around and gives us a track around the page. So if we're using this as a teaching tool or a presentation tool, that's something you may want to take a look at. You also have on the web app is the sticky notes inside of the mobile app. Um, the sticky notes are hidden down inside of the plus menu. Now you should see that we have sticky notes, images. Those are also on the web app, so you can add in pictures. This is where it gets kind of cool, the mobile app. You can add drive content, you can grab pictures from your camera, uh, and then stickers as well. So the mobile app's available in either the uh, Play Store on your Chromebook, or if depending on what kind of device you have, it's either in the Google Play Store or the Android, uh, or sorry, excuse me, or the uh, iOS App Store, so. All right, I'm gonna jump out of this app really quickly here, or sorry, that jam. And I'm gonna come back into this jam because where did this beautiful picture of a calendar come from? If I go down into my stickers, it gives me some additional stickers that I may wanna bring in. So thumbs up, thumbs down, and all of these, some just stickers. Here's, and, and again, I'm a high school math guy, so I apologize to our elementary uh, teachers there if I'm butchering this, but here's some weather stickers that maybe you like, maybe you don't like. Um, and then there's some kind of uh, wireframe models down here. So down here, we have our clock. I'm gonna click it. Oops, I clicked two of them and we can bring that in. Um, and we have our, sorry, we have our calendar. These ones are for more comics and stuff like that. We have some speech bubbles and whatnot. Okay, and that just moves it up and down. So that's all that those do. All right, so when I clicked it, it brought it right into the middle. What I can do now, I'm gonna select, and this is where part of it comes in. They all come in very small. If we highlight that, especially if you're on a Chromebook and you're using the trackpad. Uh, 
then we can use two fingers to make it bigger. And so we can make an appropriate size. Once we have it a little bit bigger, we can just click off and then we can highlight it and we can make it bigger or smaller based on that. Um, but you do need to do a little highlighted circle around that to give yourself a bigger target area to make it bigger or smaller. If you decide, you know what, that one's great, but I only needed one, I didn't need two, down at the bottom is where you drag it to trash end. And then it'll go away to the trash. So now we can have our clock and we can have our calendar and then we can bring stickers or we can bring markers and we can put stuff over top of there. Up at the top, what you'll see is a little drop down. This gives you your different frames, okay? So we can add additional frames on here. Again, think of these as pages. So you can add additional pages or slides into here. If I was working with my class on this, you may wanna have different groups working on different pages. We can add in between, we can add at the end or at the beginning. So maybe you're gonna have different, uh, a group of, you know, working on uh, a certain group of students working on one question in one, or you're doing your notes in here and then you wanna go on to the next page. So a lot of people ask with our new interactive projectors, how do I save the work that I'm doing? You can't save it directly from the projector, but if you're using something like Jamboard, then you can save that work and you can make that available. All right, so I'm gonna stop presenting here. I'm just gonna check in the chat window really quickly here to see if we have any questions. And no, we don't. Okay, cool. So I'm then gonna jump in and please chime in with any questions you have. I'm gonna share. If I'm using the laptop for admin, okay, you can't have the mobile app then, so. Um, Sorry, I just jumped off of there. So let me jump back. I can't use a mobile app, can I? No, that's correct, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna to jump to the web-based version of this. So you see in the exact same ones that I had created before, if I jump in here, it sometimes take a, takes a little bit to sync up between the mobile app and the, uh, the web-based app, but the same tools are here. So I have that direct interaction. I can see exactly what's going on. If I went over to my mobile app and I drew onto there, it's gonna take a second, but you can see that it has an indication of who did that drawing and the drawing comes up there. So it is live just like before. Same tools are down the side, including in this case, the sticky notes and the cameras are, or the images are right here. We'll get to sticky notes in a bit, um, but it's the exact same idea. One of the other pieces that I wanna highlight on the web app is up here we have our backgrounds. There's a way to do that as well in the mobile app, but this one's a little bit clearer here. Our backgrounds that we have are, for example, grid paper. Maybe we have a high resolution, right? So we wanna have that those items really pop. Uh, or we're gonna use a white thing to make it for our speech impaired student, or sorry, our speech, our visually impaired students, right? To make it a little bit clear. And then some graph papers of different types. And then we also have our line paper. So we can do a line paper, we can do a writing platform in there. So. Okay, so essentially glorified whiteboard. We're gonna bring in our pieces. We're gonna grab our pen. We're gonna draw all over this, we're gonna sketch. It is gonna be really horrible because drawing with a mouse or a trackpad is very, very difficult. If you do have a touch screen, we can do that, but it's kind of difficult when we get to that. It's the best that we can do when we're dealing in this digital world. If your students have phones, if your students have mobile device, they're gonna find that functionality a little bit easier. All right, just jumping back here. Does the web app allow you to use the file, the move file option so I can keep my Jamboards organized in my drive folders? I do not see the move file option or icon. What you can actually do is just go to your drive and then you can move them from there. So I've tried the web-based version on my laptop with a touch screen and the mobile app on my phone. I'm having issues writing out chemistry equations as the touch seems a little finicky with my finger. Does it work better with a stylus? Yes, you will find that the, uh, your finger always sort of is sticky and even just your writing ability is better, I find with a stylus. So I generally try and use that stylus. Uh, the other thing that I believe you can do um, is you can do some screen captures. 
So you could use, say, for example, Equatio if you were using that and drop those screen captures in there. But then if you're working further down with some of that information, um, you're going to need to write and stuff like that. So it is going to be, you are going to need to do that. Does it work on iPads? Yes, it does. All right. So I'm going to pop back and go back to my mobile app. Because this is one of the things where I think part of the power in these mobile apps are, is when we have the ability to start adding files from our drive. So I'm gonna jump into my drive, hopefully. Here we go. I'm gonna go into my drive. Let's see if we can't find a really great Here is a student digital records app. You know what? Uh, yep, let's grab that in there. We'll bring that in there. So if we click on it twice, oops, sorry, click on it once to select it and then go down to the bottom to insert. I'm gonna actually bring in a PDF as well. Uh, at the same time, let's see, I have a privacy impact assessment. Here's a Google doc. So we'll bring in three different documents all at the same time. We're going to select, it brings them all into the middle. So this is not ideal, um, but we're going to move these around. So we're going to grab it. Oh, did it bring it all in at once or did it just allow me to select one? Oh, you know what? I probably didn't hold down shift, so that's okay. We'll open up the doc and I'll show you the other ones in just a second here. When you're working with a document, if you click on it once, it will select it. If you double click, it actually opens up that document. So I can scroll. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and zoom in here so that you guys can see a little bit better. I can scroll up and down my document and find the different page. And if I say, okay, I want to grab page four, I can click on page four. Please. There we go. Oh and drag it out. Maybe I have to pick on the top one. Maybe I picked the wrong one here. Maybe I was going too far down and I have to pick a higher one. But I can pick an individual page of that document out. So this is true for PDFs. This is true for slides. So you can pull out a, an individual slide. You can, um, this is also true for sheets. You can pull out individual sheets as well. So now I can close that down. So now it goes back to its small one. I don't need to see that. I could delete it if I want. And with this one here, what I've done is I've uh, clicked on it once and then on my trackpad, I'm just using that separate. So I'm spreading my two fingers apart and I can make it big. And now inside of here, we can start to get in and we can have our, we can either mark it up or we could have our students mark it up. I wouldn't recommend the trying to do handwriting inside of here. You're probably gonna go a little bit nuts, but definitely it is something that you could sort of try and work on and get those pieces of information. When you're all done, you can shrink it back down. One of the things to be aware of is if I take this document, I'm gonna take my selection tool again, and I shrink it back down, it doesn't shrink the marking. The marking is not connected to the document, the marking is like an overhead over top of the document. So once you have it set, the marking will come back to the front. If you click on that back, it pushes that document to the back, but it will not set it. Uh, it will not keep everything in the way it was. So take a quick stop here and take a look back into the chat window, see if there's any questions. I think you only selected one, just one. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, if we're done with that and we're unhappy, we can trash that. We can select this and we can trash that. One of the things that I, yes, one of the things that I like to do with regards to, uh, to this, I've used this in a couple training sessions. I'm gonna draw a horrible, horrible circle here. And it does a great job. I'm gonna follow that up with another one. And it does a good job is now I have a Venn diagram of some type, okay? And so what we can do inside of here 
is we can start adding uh, sticky notes. So I'm going to jump back to I'm going to jump back to the web version and I'm going to add in a sticky note here. And we should see it pop up ever so slightly here in the uh, Android version. Uh, it seems like we're a little bit behind here, a little bit delayed. So maybe I'll jump back to the web version. There is a bit of a lag between the two. It's not ideal. It's a little bit better on mobile devices, like on actual mobile devices, um, as opposed to as opposed to the Chrome running mobile. All right, so here we go. Perfect. Um, the sticky notes allow you to create sticky notes of different color. So we can say, I want to create a sticky note. I want it to be pink. And I want to say, this is important. The reason that I bring this up, the reason that I show these pieces here, this is giving me a really ugly line there. Oops. Make sure I want the other one. Oh, for some reason, there's a line that's not getting rid of it there. Um, what we can actually do is we can have kids start to create these notes. If it's if it is important and they want to make it big, they can make it big. If it's small, they can make it small. And then we can use our Venn diagram to start to sort these notes into our different sections. So we can get the kids, you know, almost doing type of mind mapping type idea, and they can sort these out there. If we say, you know what, this is what generally what I do with the students is I get to first sort them in terms of color. So then we can say where they go. And then maybe after that, we create a table of some type that they are sorting those after the fact. So I'm thinking in terms of different, uh, let's say a biology where you're doing it with different animals and we have stuff about where they sleep, where they eat, what they, you know, all of those different things. Maybe we use specific colors for those. And then maybe our Venn diagrams, we group things that are common uh, between different types of animals, or maybe our types of animals are our colors, and then we group them into different groupings based on uh, based on the different categorization. So eating, sleeping, whatever it is. That one's there. Pictures, adding images, we can then annotate over top of the image. There is an image search inside of here. It shows up like this here. We click on the image and it drags it into the screen. All right. If we jump to, I'm just going to bring it over to this screen. If we jump to the mobile app, the image search is slightly different. So if we go to our images and we search for an image, and again, we'll say cars. It pops up a little search bar on the right hand side and allows us to scroll. And then when we find the one we want, we can drag that over and drop it onto our screen and then close down our image search window here. And now we have that, I that item on our screen. Use our select bar to open it and make it bigger. So just coming back here, questions about Jamboard that we haven't addressed. I know that there's a couple I said I'd show you how to share the document and how to rename it and stuff. Well, renaming you should know, but how to share that document and how to post it into the page. But is there any questions on the functionality that you have at this moment, at this moment right now? I'm just wondering how you go to a clean screen. Like, can you do multiple, multiple screens, like to do a whole lesson? Yep, absolutely. So what we're going to do, we'll jump to our web version here. Up at the top, you have your frames. And if we click the drop down on the frame, 
we can add in additional frames. And every one of these frames is a clean screen. So when we jump to that frame, we have a clean screen. We can set a different background for that screen. And then when I jump to the next one, I'm back to that clear one and I can set it for my line drawing or whatnot. I can clear the frame because there's nothing in here. The background is different than objects. But if you clear the frame, if we had went back to, let's say this guy right here, and we cleared it, it would wipe out everything that we had had on there before. So. Okay, thank you. It's, absolutely, yeah. Inside here, we're in our, our, this is the web app. So we can either just grab uh, that Jamboard link right there, or we could pop down to share here. I'll turn the sharing on this and we'll change it. So anyone at Palliser Schools with the link and we want can view, I'm going to change it to edit because this is where uh, you guys can all jump in and start playing. And we'll say done. And I'm going to dump this in the chat window here while you guys are also looking at this. And you can jump in. Can you import videos or link files like a doc that are interactive? No, you can't. No, it's a it's essentially a picture of the image. Uh, I haven't figured out a way to put in audio or video yet. Can you import video files or links? Oh, same question. Just hit enter twice. Uh, no, you can't. So. Yes, we can type text using post-it notes, but can we insert a text box and enter in text? No, you can't. So you would need to, uh, yeah, sorry, Nisa, that was that was kind of the short answer. Thank you for understanding. Um, you would need to, um, this wouldn't be something that you would create to create text boxes that you want the students to enter, but maybe what you could do, uh, I'm just going to jump in and present my screen here. Maybe what you would do in a case like that is bring in, say, a sticker. And let's use one of these. Well, let's use this guy right here. Oops. So we're gonna put that sticker in the background. And then we might ask our kids then to fill that in using the sticky notes. So if, if that's what we wanted, or maybe it's us, maybe we're identifying the different topics. So we've, we've created essentially that table type idea where we have different portions where we're gonna ask the kids to enter their answers, or we're gonna enter in some notes or something like that. But uh, the ability to just enter in text completely is not there, so. The link is different. Uh, yeah, so so essentially, I guess, and maybe this is reflecting back to uh, to Nick's question there. Um, the videos or link files. Essentially, you want something that you can interact with. No, I don't believe that you can. So, all right. So we're coming up right to the very end here, and I want to show because this is. Uh, this is a bit where it's kind of fun. Um, and again, this is only on the mobile apps. This isn't available on the uh, on the web app there. Um, if you go into your assistive drawing tools and you select the last tool, this is the uh, this is the auto draw tool. I'll come to a fresh screen here. Uh, if I start to draw a really horrible picture of a cat you see at the bottom of the screen it starts to pop up with some icons and it is not ideal but then when we select the picture so i've done this one a lot so i knew that that is going to get me these specific ones but we'll click on that one 
it actually sets it exactly as you would want to have that that cat. This is an item then your picture is gone. So you can move this around. You can actually copy and paste this picture into other applications. Um, and then uh, if you want it to be a different color, we would have to redraw that picture. We can do say the, uh, a tower of some type, I don't know. Oh, perfect, a lighthouse, boom. So now we could have our green lighthouse. So, you know, kind of goofy, kind of silly, but it is something that, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you could use or maybe your students could use as well. That's not available on the web interface, so. All right, so we are right at 2.30 there. I've been trying to keep these to half an hour um, or as close as I could. So I thank you guys. I'll stick around uh, if there's any questions. I will, um, this was recorded. I'll share that out and you can share it out with anybody. If you have, uh, if you accepted the calendar invite, the recording and a script from the chat window will go out uh, within uh, that calendar invite. It gets attached to that automatically. So you can take a look in there. Uh, if not, I'll try and send this out later on today. Um, I think I might try and see if I can set up a couple of them for next week. I haven't. Uh, I haven't. I have a few topics, but uh, we'll we'll see. Information might be coming. Uh, it is our Easter break down here in the south, so teachers up in Calgary who just came back from their spring break were going off. Uh, so, but I might still see if we can connect on a couple of these. So I'm going to, if unless there's a question, I'm going to shut down and then we'll answer your questions on the back down. I'm going to shut down the recording. So if anybody does have a question, jump in. All right.